Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Sun is the source of energy for all the living beings on the earth. Sun is the source for all the life forms on the earth. So this very fact has been recognized by our ancient wisdom. So this importance of sun or the significance of sun has been scripted or it has been written in the very sacred scriptures of India. Since the ancient times, since the beginning of the Harappan civilization, we have recognized this very fact that the sun is the source of energy for all the living beings on the earth. So from that day onwards, from the Indus civilization onwards till today, we have recognized the sun as the sacred god. So this, the sun, though it is the scientifically nothing but it is some of the celestial body, but for the spiritual mind, it is regarded as the god. So the sun has assumed the importance or the, he has assumed the role of God in the Indian mythology. Okay. So in the scriptures like the Vedas, especially the Rig Veda and various Upanishads and Puranas, the sun is recognized as the God. So there is a one dedicated uh, stotra for the sun also in the Rig Veda. Okay, so this Vedic period was long back, it are almost around 2000 years back the Vedic period was there. Okay, from that day onwards still we are regarding this as the uh, sun as the God. Okay, so today we are going to discuss about the some of the temples which are dedicated to the sun God. Okay, so very recently the, the Modera sun temple which is located in the Gujarat was in news because of this some context. Okay, we will look into the context. The context is that the Ahmedabad railway station at the Kalupur in the Ahmedabad city will be developed on the theme of Modera Sun Temple in the next five years. Okay, this is the statement given by the Union Home Minister and the Corporation Cooperation Minister. Okay, Union Home and Co Cooperation Minister said on the July 24th, 2022, that the Ahmedabad railway station at Kalupur will be developed on the theme of Modera Sun Temple. Okay, So because of this context, Modera Temple has assumed the importance for our study. Okay. Now talking about the Modera Sun Temple, let me introduce what this temple is. So this temple is dedicated to the solar deity. Okay. So in our mythology, the solar deity is nothing but the sun. Okay. He is called as the Surya. Okay. So this Modera Sun Temple, as the name itself suggests that this temple is dedicated to the Sun God or the Surya. Okay, this is located in the Modera village in the Mahesana district of Gujarat. Okay, this architecturally beautiful temple is located in the state of Gujarat. Okay, in the village called as the Modera. So, on the bank, this temple is located on the bank of river Pushpavati. This is very important fact. Okay, the river Pushpavati. River Pushpavati flows near the Modhera village. Okay, this sun temple is located in the bank of Pushpavati river. In fact, this Pushpavati river is the tributary of Rupen river. Okay, Rupen river, it is a perennial, sorry, uh, it is a seasonal river which flows only during the uh, rainy season. Okay, so this Rupen river does not meet the ocean. Okay, it doesn't have the mouth in the ocean okay it doesn't form any of the deltas in the coastal area okay this rupen river dries up in the run of kutch okay this run of kutch is the marshy area by the time this rupen river reaches the run of kutch it will dry okay so this pushpavati river is the tributary of rupen river so this temple was constructed during the period of 1026 27 almost 1000 year back this temple was constructed by the king bhima one of the chalukya dynasty these are not the uh, karnataka chalukyas not the watapi chalukyas or the badami chalukyas these are the chalukyas of gujarat there is no connection between the watapi chalukyas or the badami chalukyas and the gujarat chalukyas okay so these chalukyas are also called as the solankis okay chalukya dynasty or the solanki dynasty these solankis are one among the different clans of the rajput families okay so this solanki is the rajput family you can say so the the king bhima one or the bhima deva he constructed or he commissioned this temple to be built okay this temple is built on 23 degrees 
north latitude okay 23.6 degree north latitude see the tropic of cancer is located at the the uh, latitude of 23 and half north latitude right 23 and half north latitude is called as the tropic of cancer okay so if you look into this latitudinal extent this is 23.6 that means very close to the tropic of cancer this temple the sun temple is located very very near to the tropic of cancer in the northern latitude okay in the state of gujarat so there is no worship is offered in this temple because it was subjected to the demolition there is no god uh, at the sanctum sanctorum of the temple okay there is no worship is you no know, happening in this temple right now so the temple is in the mon it is regarded as the monument of national importance and it is maintained by the archaeological survey of india yes by recognizing the cultural value or the architectural value of this temple it is regarded as the monument of national importance okay so in fact it is included in the unesco's world heritage list also okay now it is under the maintenance of the archaeological survey of india it is subjected to the maintenance under the different statutes of the parliament okay the legends related to the sun temple of the modera the temple finds the mention in the ancient texts yes i have said that the since the beginning of the our culture we have given a lot of importance to the sun god okay the, there are various the texts especially the ancient texts which refer this modera temple okay the skanda purana and the brahma purana these are the two puranas which refer to the modera temple okay the older texts they also refer to the modera and its surrounding areas as the dharmaranya or the forest of righteousness okay dharmaranya or the forest of the religion the area in and around this modera village is called as the dharmaranya by the ancient texts okay now let us look into the history of this temple the sun temple modera is contemporary to the chola temples in the south india and the chandela temples in the north yes this was commissioned or this temple was commissioned in the year 1026 okay and the 27 so if you look into this this is the 70 11th uh, century ad okay 11th century ad so this 11th century ad is the period where the cholas were also there as well as the chandelas chandelas in the madhya pradesh area they were also present okay this temple belongs or it it belongs to the contemporary period of cholas as well as the chandelas okay the cholas they were the formidable power in the south india and the chandelas culturally very uh, rich you know dynasty in the central part of india so this temple was built in a time when the temple architecture was at a peak in india if you look into the chola period if you look into the chandela period so they have constructed the temples which are very very uh, uh, my, uh, what you call very significant architecturally very significant architecture very beautiful okay so they are some of the you, know, you can say these are the heritage are the most important heritage of the india okay so this was the period 11th century was the temple architecture period okay during this period this temple was built the shrine was built during the reign of bhima 1 yes we have discussed this point bhima 1 of the solanki dynasty now there was an attack on this temple by the muhammad of ghazni yes he was an invader into the india who came to india in the year 1024 and 25 okay this temple was commissioned to be built in the year 19 sorry 1026 and the 27 okay so the muhammad of ghazni he invaded bhima's kingdom okay uh, in the gujarat area the muhammad of ghazni invaded Bhima's army was unsuccessful to check the advance of the Muhammad of Ghazni okay Muhammad of Ghazni he he was invading into India he was plundered he plundered various temples in India and he looted the asset which was you know stored in the temples so this Bhima one he was not successful to uh, curb or he, he was unsuccessful to uh, you know discourage or to prevent the advancement of the Muhammad of Ghazni there is an assumption that this temple might have been built to commemorate this defense yes he was unsuccessful but to some extent he protected the kingdom but the some of the historians they say that this temple is built to commemorate this defense of the state by the 
Bhima 1. Okay. During this time, Somnath Temple faced multiple attacks from the Muhammad of Ghazni. Yes, Muhammad of Ghazni, especially the Somnath Temple, is known for unfamiliar thing or the unfamiliar uh, fact that this temple was attacked by more than 17 times by the Muhammad of Ghazni. King Bhima Deva was not successful yes, in warding off this attack and the Muhammad left with his loot. Yes, he looted the Somnath temples and nearby areas. This Bhima Deva was not you know, able to contain his advancement. The temple was rebuilt again. Okay, after the attack by this Muhammad of Ghazni, the temple was rebuilt again. The Modera temple was attacked again and it was plundered. Again, after the construction of the Modera temple, it was again attacked, it was again plundered, it was looted by the Allahuddin Khilji at the later date. Yes, Allahuddin Khilji, he also came and he attacked and he plundered the Modera temple. Okay, this is the very sad historical fact related to the Modera temple. Okay, on the stylistic ground, now regarding the construction, which part of this temple was constructed first? Okay, on the stylistic ground, based on the style, it is known that the Kunda, there are different components in this temple complex. Okay, one is uh, Sabha Mantapa, one is Garbhagraha, one is uh, Guda Mantapa and one is Thorna and another part is called as the Kunda or you, you, you can say this Kunda is nothing but the okay this Kunda is the reservoir of the water okay this Kunda or the reservoir was built first compared to the other parts of the temple okay this beginning of this Kunda was uh, began in the 11th century so earlier part of the 11th century the dancing hall or the sabha mantapa was added much later okay in the 12th century okay first this kunda or the reservoir of water was built first and later part and the later part in the uh, there was a much gap between this construction of the kunda and other parts of the temple okay so that means this temple as a whole is not built under one king okay there, uh, there was a long period for construction of this temple okay looking into the architectural style of this temple this temple complex is built in maru gurjara style this is very important maru gurjara style okay this maru gurjara style is also called as the chalukyan style or the solanki style okay this chalukya dynasty in the gujarat is also called as the solankis okay this architecture or the maru gurjara architectural style is also called as the solanki architecture or the Chalukya architecture. There are three components of the temple. Okay, in this temple complex, there are three components. One is Gudha Mantapa, this is the shrine hall, the Sabha Mantapa, the assembly hall, and the Kunda or the reservoir of the water. These are the three very prominent components of the temple complex in the Modera. Now, this is the basic plan of the temple. So, this is what is the Kund. Okay, this is the reservoir. This is the Kund reservoir, the uh, reservoir of the water. You know, on all the sides, it is surrounded by the walls. And in between this is Sabha Mantapa and the Kund, there is one structure called as the Torana. Okay, so this is the Sabha Mantapa. There is a gap between this Sabha Mantapa and the Guda Mantapa. Okay, Sabha Mantapa and Guda Mantapa, there is a gap. So this whole structure is called as the Guda Mantapa, which this Mantapa also uh, hosts the this is the Garbhagraha, okay. So, this is Garbhagraha located within the Guda Mantapa. There is a gap between Guda Mantapa and Sabha Mantapa. In front of the Sabha Mantapa, there is a Torana, and after this Torana, there is a Kund. This is the basic plan of the temple, okay. So, again, the same diagram the Kunda, Torana, Sabha Mantapa, and the Guda Mantapa. Within this Guda Mantapa, this A is nothing but the Garbhagraha, okay. This is the Garbhagraha. So, surrounding the Garbhagraha, there is a gap, okay. So, all around the Garbhagraha, there is a gap. This gap is called as the Pradakshana Pata, okay, or Circumambulatory Path. Sir circumambulatory Path are the Pradakshana Pata, which is, you know, uh, around, present around the Garbhagraha, okay. This Garbhagraha is within the Buddha Mantapa, okay. So, these are the different parts of the temple and this is the basic plan of the temple. Uh, this, this is in the Solanki style of architecture, okay. This uh, temple was commissioned by the Solanki king called as the Bhima Deva or the Bhima the first. So, again, this is the illustrated detailed diagram of this temple, the same. This is the Kunda, this is the Torana, this is the Gu 
sabha mantapa this is the gu, uh, good sorry the whole of this uh, structure is called as guda mantapa within this guda mantapa is the our garbhagraha okay this is the illustrated part of this plan okay this is the basic plan and this is the illustrated detailed plan of this temple so this is the aerial view of the present temple this is the kund or the reservoir of water here is the torana this is the torana okay this is the sabha mantapa and there is a gap between sabha mantapa and the guda mantapa this whole structure is the guda mantapa within this guda mantapa there is a structure this is the garbhagraha okay so this is the aerial view or the the birds eye view of this temple this is how the solanki architecture or the the mudera san temple looks like from the above so looking into the sabha mantapa now we will discuss about the different components of the temple first one is the sabha mantapa this is also called as the ranga mantapa or the assembly hall or the dancing hall okay this is the prominent part in the temple which is called as the sabha mantapa it is also called as the ranga mantapa assembly hall or the dancing hall so it is the basic plan of this mantapa is the parallelogram or the basic plan is the parallelogram the parallelogram is you know this is the parallelogram which like looks like this okay so it is again like the rectangular form but which is twisted this is the parallelogram in that structure this sabha mantapa is constructed okay so this sabha mantapa has the 52 intricately carved pillars okay there are 52 pillars in this sabha mantapa these 52 pillars represent the 52 weeks in the year okay one year having the 365 days it contains the 52 weeks okay 52 weeks these intricately carved pillars in this sabha mantapa they represent the 52 weeks in the year okay so the, it is etched with the images representing the stories from the hindu epics of narayana sorry ramayana and the mahabharata okay this sabha mantapa has the intricately carved pillars along with the there are intricately carved images also these images they depict the stories from the indian great epics called as the ramayana and the mahabharata so the sabha mantapa is not in continuation with the guda mantapa but it is placed little away as a separate structure yes in the previous diagram we have seen that there is a gap between this sabha mantapa and the guda mantapa okay there is a gap this is the gap okay now this is the detailed picture of the sabha mantapa okay these are the different pillars okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 around 10 pillars are visible from the front view okay this is the sabha mantapa but this sabha mantapa as a whole contains the 52 intricately carved pillars okay this is the sabha mantapa so both the sabha mantapa and the guda mantapa are built on the paved platform okay please look very detailed uh, look into uh, this picture very detailed so this is called as the platform okay this is the platform so this is the platform this sabha mantapa is built on the raised platform this raised platform okay this is called as the plinth or the platform so on this platform this sabha mantapa rests okay the sabha mantapa as well as the guda mantapa both of them are constructed on this basic structure called as the platform okay their roofs have collapsed long ago they leaving behind the very few lower most courses okay so there was the roof on this uh, as you uh, see in this uh, diagram there was a roof okay elevated roof on this structure now there is no more roof because this temple was subjected to the demolition or it was under the attack by the different invaders uh, in the indian soil okay so again uh, this is the detailed side view of this temple this is nothing but the guda mantapa and this is the sabha mantapa okay there is a gap between guda mantapa and sabha mantapa here okay these both the guda mantapa as well as the sabha mantapa they are located or they are resting on the platform raised platform okay so this is the side view of the guda mantapa and the sabha mantapa okay now coming into the garbhagraha are the main center of the 
uh, any of the temples is the garbhagraha or it is the sanctum sanctorum of the temple okay so this is rectangular in plan yes in the previous diagram we have seen so you can see this diagram okay so this is the uh, basic plan of the temple this is the our garbhagraha this garbhagraha has the square plan okay this is the square in structure okay the pradakshina patha is formed by the passage between the walls of the garbhagraha and the outer walls of the guda mandapa yes in the same basic plan of the temple we have see, saw that the pradakshina patha is located between the garbhagraha as well as the outside walls of the the guda mandapa okay the shikara there is no longer exist this shikara doesn't exist now but when the temple was built there was a shikara on the uh, garbhagraha of the temple but because of the uh, destruction by the invaders there is no longer the shikara now the walls inside the shrine are the plain and the outer wall is decorated yes the temple inside doesn't um, you know host much of the carved images but the walls outside the temple they are intricately carved okay they are highly decorated with the carved images the chief deity so we have discussed already that the chief deity in this temple is the sun god so earlier there was gold idol of the sun god studded with the diamonds yes uh, the ancient uh, people or the medieval people they stored a lot of the wealth in the temples the main deity or the chief deity of this you know uh, temple was the sun god there was a statue of the sun god which is you know uh, made of the gold okay there was a gold statue this gold statue was studded with the diamonds diamond and the gold these looters or the invaders they looted this you know idol from the temple there is no more such a you know uh, valuable idol in the temple right now now this is the guda mandapa within this guda mandapa is located the garbhagraha okay so this is the raised platform on this platform this whole structure is lying okay there was you know shikara on this temple there is no more shikara now so the one more very interesting fact about this temple is that the garbhagraha is de designed in a way that the first rays of the rising sun lit up the image of the surya during the solar equinox days okay in the geography you have studied that there are the concepts or the position of the sun they are called as the solar equinox noxus and the solstices solstice and the equinoxes equinoxes are nothing but the days and the nights of the uh, particular day will be equal okay the uh, night and the day will be of the equal length on the equinoxes but on the solstice days there is a longer day or the longer night okay so this garbhagraha this temple is constructed in such a way that the first rays of the rising sun lit up the image of the surya during the solar equinoxes okay so this is the position of the earth with re with respect to the sun okay uh, on this particular equinox day the night night and the day will be of the equal length okay on this day the first rays of the rising sun will lit up this garbhagraha okay so this is very peculiar character in this temple but on the summer solstice day in the northern hemisphere the summer solstice day falls on the june 1st uh, sorry june 21st okay internationally it is recognized as the international yoga day okay so on that solstice day on that summer solstice day the sun shines directly above the temple at the noon casting no shadow okay when the sun is particularly sorry perpendicularly above our head there is no casting of the shadow okay on the summer solstice day when the sun is on the perpendicularly above the temple there is no shadow for this temple okay this is the very unique feature of this temple okay this is the summer solstice this is how the uh, earth is tilted or the earth is located with respect to the sun's position now coming to the guda mandapa the outer walls are intricately carved yes uh, likewise like the garbhagraha this guda mandapa also intricately carved outside the uh, walls but inside walls they are not much you know uh, intricately decorated these images in the outer walls they depict the stories from the ramayana and the mahabharata this is built on the paved platform yes we have seen in the previous images the platform is inverted lotus shaped yes whatever the platform we have seen it is in the structure or it is in the shape of the inverted lotus okay so the plinth is almost equally divided into the guda mandapa and the garbhagraha yes i have 
said that the guda mantapa hosts the garbhagraha also okay both the garbhagraha and the guda mantapa they are equally divided on this raised platform or the inverted lotus shaped platform okay so this is the guda mantapa so this is the raised platform okay so this platform depicts the inverted lotus uh, flower okay so this is the back side view of the guda mantapa which hosts the garbhagraha also now this is the intricately carved outside wall of this guda mantapa okay if if you look into this detailed picture you can wonder how these carvings were made okay so this signifies the centrality of the temples in the cultural life of the medieval people okay so now coming to the next component of this temple complex that is the kirti torana so there was a kirti torana the triumphant arc the meaning of this kirti torana is the triumphant arc so it is in the front of the sabha mantapa okay so in the basic plan of the temple we have seen that the first there was a kunda after the kunda there was a kirti uh, torana after the kirti torana there was a sabha mantapa and after sabha mantapa there was the guda mantapa okay so this is the triumphant arc which is located in front of the sabha mantapa the pediment and the torana they no longer exists but the two pillars remain okay so please look into this diagram this is the the arc actually these are the pillars above this pillar there was a pediment or there was the arc okay this was the triumphant arc but this arc does not exist now because of the attacks by the looters or the invaders okay there were two more kirti toranas on each side of the kunda of which only one exists without upper part now see there were uh, three to four pillars are the triumphant arc are the kirti toranas but among all these four to uh, four three to four pillars only the only one ki uh, two kirti toranas are remaining right now okay now coming to the next component of this temple that is the kunda it is a tank or the reservoir okay it is the tank of water or the reservoir of the water it is known as the ram kunda or the surya kunda okay the majorly it is known by the surya kunda but sometimes sometimes it is also called as the ram kunda because there is a belief in the mythology or the in the cultural life of the P, uh, indian people that the lord rama visited this temple and he took the ablution or he took the bath in this Uh, kunda that is why it is also called as the ram kunda okay but majorly it is called as the surya kunda the flight of the steps through the kirti torana leads to the reservoir yes after the in the basic plan of the temple there was a kunda after that kunda there was a kirti torana right the there is a flight of the steps or the there is a uh, the structure which leads to the kunda okay it is the it is called as the flight of the steps okay it, that leads to the reservoir this reservoir is rectangular in shape there are supposed to be 108 small shrines all throughout the steps in the tank okay so this rectangular sh uh, shaped tank it was a host for 108 temples around its structure okay the main purpose of uh, building this kunda was to store the water as well as to perform the ceremonies for the worshiping the sun god or the chief deity as of this temple okay so this is how the kunda looks like these are the different steps that lead to the pond or the bottom of the pond this is the temple okay this temple is located just you know uh, in front of this kunda this is the kirti torana yes now the arc is no more okay earlier it was looking like this arc was there on these two pillars this arc was subjected to the demolition now there is no arc this is the kunda see th this is the the way which leads to the reservoir okay so after this uh, uh, arc there is a sabha mantapa after this sabha mantapa this is the guda mantapa okay so this is the structure and this is the rectangular shaped reservoir see th this modera sun temple is also known by the festival that is the modera dance festival okay so this festival it is organized by the state government especially by the tourism corporation of the gujarat state government it is an annual 3 day dance festival okay 
So as the name suggests, the Modera Dance Festival, this is the festival of the dances, especially the classical dances of India are performed during this festival. Okay. So this festival is known as the Uttarardha Mahotsava. Okay. So this was held, this festival is held during the third week of the January or the Makara Sankranti. Makara Sankranti is the Uttarayana. Okay. So after this Uttarayana, the Dakshinayana will start. Okay. Sorry, uh, after this Makara Sankranti, this Mahotsav or the festival is held. It is called as the Uttarardha Mahotsava. The major objective or the basic objective of this festival is to present the classical dance forms in an atmosphere similar to that in which they were originally presented. Yes, these classical dance forms, they were presented uh, during their initial days in the temples. Okay, the major objective of this temple is that the dances or the classical dances uh, to facilitate the uh, classical dances to be performed in the original setup which were uh, there in the initial days of these dances okay so this is the major objective behind this festival now let us come to the very interesting fact about this temple so the so there are some of the repeating points in this you know slide the temple is located near the tropic of cancer yes because this is dedicated to the sun there must be some significant uh, significance to the location of this temple also okay it is located on the tropic of cancer or very very near to the tropic of cancer that is 23 and 6 degree uh, north latitude okay so during the solar equinoxes, the first rays of the sun will fall straight on the temple, illuminating the idol of the sun. Just the sun shines on the top of the temple during the summer solstice. Okay, this is the equinox. This is the solstice. On the equinoxes, the first rays will fall directly on the temple, uh, the main deity of the temple. Then on the solstices, there is no shadow for the temple. Okay. There is no kind of a plaster or the limestone is used. Okay. The here the pillars or the whole temple structure is built all or the, the, this temple is structurally balanced to, to keep the temple erect okay there is no use of the plaster or the limestone okay the carvings of the temple they depict the stories of the ramayana and the mahabharata yes they depict the elements of the fire this is very important fact these images are the carvings they depict the elements of the fire air water earth okay these are the very five elements which made all the living forms on the earth okay so these images they signify the unity with the sun okay the unity of all these elements with the sun it is depicted by the carvings in the temple okay so very very important fact is that in the 2014 in the year 2014 this temple is entered into the list of the unesco's world heritage sites now this modera temple is the world heritage site okay recognized by the unesco in the year 2014 so these are the intricate carvings of the temple so this is called as the torana inside the sabha mantapa this is the torana and these are the decorative pillars are the intricately carved complex pillars within the sabha mantapa again th these are the carvings on the outer walls of the sabha mantapa as well as the guda mantapa okay this is the inside or it, it, this sometimes it is called as the bhuvaneshwari or the uh, roof inside roof of this sabha mantapa okay these are the different pillars which are 50, 52 in numbers so again the detailed pillars which depict the stories of the ramayana as well as the mahabharata this is the central point or the inside of the roof now this is not the only sun temple in india there are various sun temples especially there are four sun temples which are historically or architecturally very very significant for indian people okay apart from these four historical sun temples there are several other sun, sun temples which are very popular but which are these modern temples are built very very recently okay but historically there are four very important sun temples they are konark sun temple located in the state of orisha there is a dakshinarka temple in the bihar state which is located in the gaya city the Surya Mandir at the Marthand Tirth in the Kashmir and the Mod Modhera Sun Temple, whatever we have discussed so far. These are the four architecturally beautiful as well as the historically significant 
sun temples in India. But along with these, there are Suryanar Koil in the Tamil Nadu, Suryanarana Temple in the Arasavalli of the Andhra Pradesh, Surya Pahad Temple in the Assam, okay, Brahmana Deva Temple in Unnao of the Uttar Pradesh, okay, the Modera in the Gujarat, the Gwalior Sun Temple in the Madhya Pradesh, as well as the Sun Temple at the Katharmal in the Almora district of the Uttarakhand. Okay, these are very significant and most famous sun temples in India as of now. Okay, so this is the map which shows some of the uh, sun temples in India. This is the Modera Sun Temple. Okay, Modera Sun Temple. This is the Suryanarayan uh, Suryanar Koil in the Tamil Nadu. This is the Arasavalli Sun Temple in the Andhra Pradesh. This is our the famous Konark Sun Temple. This is the Dakshinarka Temple in the Bihar. Okay, this is the Gwalior Sun Temple, and this is the Marthanda Sun Temple in the state, uh, Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Especially, this Marthanda Surya Temple is located in the Kashmir Valley. Okay, so this is the graphical, sorry, uh, map representation of the different. Sun temples. If you look into this, see there is almost in the Assam also there is one sun temple. But if you look into this map, these sun temples are dotted all across the country. Okay, that means the sun has the central role, uh, role in the worship or the culture of the Indian people. Okay, so this is all about the Modera Sun Temple and other various uh, famous sun temples in India and the architectural style of the Modera Sun Temple and the Solanki dynasty, especially the Bhima Deva's architectural style. Okay, these Solankis have commissioned various other uh, temples also, especially in the western part. The Chalukyas of the Gujarat, they are the uh, they were ruling in the Marwa Plateau or the Marwar Plateau, okay, in the Kutch Peninsula. All of their activity, cultural or the architectural activity, are centered or located in the western part of India, okay. So, we can study the Solanki architecture in detail in different classes, but as of now, we will restrict ourselves to the Solanki dynasty's architecture uh, depicted in the Modera Sun Temple, okay. Thank you very much for watching this video.